another morning in the gym. I'm coming for the big dosser, the big useless dosser, it's juice maker. The big man who's not off a carrot, the big sausage. The war of words between Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder has continued on social media. However, when all said and done, the one and only reason for Fury Wilder 3 not happening on July 24, 2021 is because of Tyson Fury and his camp. Even to Tyson's promoter, Bob Arams, discussed. Tyson shouldn't have been so laissez-faire, allowing so many people in to watch him train. Fact is, at this point in time, Tyson Fury pulled out of a fight, piling up the Gypsy King's track record of pullouts. However, this has not always been the case, and today we're discussing what might have been the starting point of Tyson Fury's history of pullouts. The question for today's story, will history repeat itself this time with the shoe on the other foot? Hey ringsiders, this is your host Boxing Subjective Observer and welcome back to Ringside Stories. Feel free to like and share. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell if you enjoy the content. Wilder, contract signed, you get smashed. Now this footage strikes many similarities with a recording from way back when. He rejigged the contract so he's nice and happy. So here we go, Mr. Fury. All done. Now let's back up a little because for today's story, we find ourselves first in February of 2012 when the then British and Commonwealth heavyweight champion Tyson Fury decides to vacate his British title, effectively removing himself from a fight with amateur rival and mandatory challenger David Price, who just came off a 73 second knockout win over former two-time Tyson Fury opponent John McDermott. In an interview with the Daily Mirror, Pricey on a potential matchup with Fury said, quote, people say he is going to avoid me, but I know Tyson Fury will fight because he's a fighting man. Otherwise, he will look like a bit of a coward. He's stuck between a rock and a hard place. He's not ready to move on to world level, but can he fight me? We'll wait and see, but I think he will." End quote. As stated, Fury vacates the British title, and a few days later in an interview with the BBC, the Manchester-born fighter claims Team Price rejected a 100,000 British pound offer stating, quote, if David Price really believed he could beat me, the smart move would have been to take the great payday to appear on terrestrial television, end quote. Fury goes on to say, quote, it's been an honor to have won and held both the British and Commonwealth heavyweight titles, but as I'm now currently number seven in the world, it's time to move on, end quote. So given that Fury's team made an offer to Team Price and the ambition to move up the heavyweight world rankings, I don't really see this as a duck per se, but if you want to, feel free. Now, as we all know, Tyson Fury would eventually successfully challenge for three world titles as Vladimir Klitschko's mandatory challenger. And David Price, well, he hasn't come close to fighting for a world championship to this day. Fast forward to 2013, which leads us back to this moment in time. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. What a beautiful sunny day it is. And I'm even happier because I'm about to sign the fight for Tyson Fury. We've rejigged the contract so he's nice and happy. So here we go, Mr. Fury. All done. David Hay, who made a name for himself as a former unified cruiserweight world champion, and also the last Brit at that time who won a portion of the heavyweight world title, was still considered the best British heavyweight at that point in time. Now, Hay didn't express interest to fight Fury until April 21, 2013, when a 20 something year old Tyson Fury got in the ring with former two time IBF cruiserweight world champion Steve Cunningham, left without his uncle and trainer Peter Fury, who couldn't enter stateside because of visa issues. Tyson, pretty much without a corner, went into a fight, got careless, and dropped hard in the opening seconds of round two. This was a good boxer in Steve Cunningham who was a small heavyweight at best and not known for his punching power. And this is probably the moment that David Hay decided he wanted the Tyson Fury fight. Hay, who held all of the major titles at cruiserweight with the exception of Cunningham's IBF title, came off an explosive TKO victory over Derek Chisora in 2012. 
something no fighter had accomplished at that time including Tyson Fury. After being in possession of the WBA World Heavyweight strap for two years, David Hay lost his unification bout with long reigning champion Vladimir Klitschko in the summer of 2011. Even then, going in the Fury fight, David Hay was still considered the favorite. He may be the haymaker, but I have the playmaker. I've delivered 21 times in a row. I've brung it out the fire every single time I've had to do. And David Hay was notorious for drawing up attention to have people care about and by his fights. You wanna fight me? So this fight's gonna be as one-sided as a gang rape. I, I want the Klitschko's heads, plain and simple. No doubt. You and your brother. And I'm gonna have them. This year I'm gonna have both of them. And this is the same guy that was surprisingly subdued for his standards as the Haymaker took a step back during the build-up for the Hay Fury fight. And a lot of people can laugh at him for all the b I've ever talked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's why he's there. As much as Fury might have felt threatened by Hay, you could tell he was genuinely excited for this fight. I'm asking you the question now, my friend. Are you going to come and fight? Or are you going to stink the place yeah, up? You have to find out on the night. There you go. I sense a stinker. And unfortunately for boxing fans, Tyson Fury was proven to be right. As just days before the fight on September 28, 2013, the fight got postponed due to a cut David Hay apparently had suffered in sparring heavyweight prospect Filip Hergovic. Yes, final sparring session last night. Got a cut. How did it happen? I don't know, second round, you know, everything was going okay and about to the corner, cut. Fans expressed their disappointment and questioned the validity of Hay's injury. Now to his defense, David Hay at least went on record to apologize whether you believe this was genuine or not. So wholeheartedly apologize to him and his team and everybody who you know, excited and wanted to watch this fight. I know people, I know dozens and dozens of people have come from all over the world, booked hotels, you know, it just messes up hundreds of thousands of people and millions of people, you know, yeah, it's horrible. David Ace, not just a boxer, he's a trickster as well. And I just don't think he wants his fight, to be honest. He tried the intimidation job and all that, but he's not going to intimidate me. Um, pretty pissed off of it all, to be honest. Um, put all this work in, spend all that money and, uh, and just end up with nothing, really. And I don't think he's going to take the fight in February anyway. Unfortunately for boxing fans, Tyson was proven right yet again because the rescheduled bout between Fury and Hay for February 8, 2014 eventually got called off due to a shoulder injury that Hay suffered. As according to David Hay, doctors advised the Londoner to retire. How dare you mention my name in the same sentence as David Hay. David Hay is a bitch, a bitch who wouldn't even fight me two times. But yet he got in the ring and he took you 12 rounds and messed, the, messed about, stunk the full joint out and you didn't do nothing. What did you do? Nothing. Against the guy who was too afraid to get in the ring and even fight me. Made a million excuses. Hey, oh. <sighs> yeah, complain about that, David It is clear that the postponement of Fury vs. Hay has bothered Tyson for a long time. Something that he even admitted years down the road. They say time is a healer. And I'm healed now, thank God. Are you over it now? I was bitter for a over it now? Yes. After his decisive win over Deontay Wilder in February of 2020, a performance Tyson's former rival was nothing short of impressed with. And he took Wilder completely out of his comfort zone. How many other fighters could do that to Wilder? So 40, 40 odd have tried in the past and nearly all of them got knocked spark out. Pretty much all of them other than what, uh, Fury have been knocked out. To be great, you've got to beat greatness and Deontay Wilder had the best punt, best knockout record ever and he went over there and played with him. If Deontay Wilder was a, a 10 fight novice, you would have said, oh fair enough, I can see the, the golfing difference. The golfing class was just so significant and clear. Fast forward to the summer of 2021, where Tyson Fury seems to have walked away from the Wilder trilogy for now. The arbitration case, which ruled the Fury-Wilder 3 fight to take place before September 15, 2021, is still in effect, 
but with Fury vs. Wilder 3 rescheduled for October of 2021, will the COVID-19 situation be a legal loophole for Team Fury to get out of this fight? Will Fury eventually walk away from this third encounter with the Bronze Bomber, effectively repeating history but with the shoe on the other foot? I'm asking you the question now, my friend. Are you going to come and fight? Or are you going to stink the place? Yeah, you have to find out on the night. There you go. I sense a stinker. Only time will tell. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and let's have a conversation. If you're new to this channel, we make content about combat, sport and boxing from a unique point of view. So if you enjoy that type of content, feel free to subscribe, hit the like button and switch on all notifications. That's how you'll know when the next fire video drops. If you've done that already, you're awesome. You already know that you're the true undisputed world champion. Till next time, Ringsiders, this is your host, Boxing's Objective Observer, with Ringside Stories. Thanks for watching, and have a legendary day.